with spring comes growth with spring comes growth of the flowers on a venus flytrap hi it's a gorgeous 68 degrees outside and it's a little hotter than that in the greenhouse it is 88 degrees inside so i decided that as long as it's spring and it's not raining today like it's going to tomorrow at least i kind of hope it does i decided to grab a venus flytrap and show you how you take the flower stock off the fly trap and make new babies so i'm uh, i've grabbed a maroon monster i think it's a looking pretty this spring i mean we are just into the end of may and it's been a tough spring so far there's been a lot of cold weather where normally we would get the warmth but i want to show you what i do on these i've probably do a couple examples of just to show you what I do on these to get new fly traps started. Look at the gorgeous color on this thing. The traps have got some nice dark red on there and you can see the stem is quite red and this is a maroon monster so it is going to be a darker color on it but it's got some nice pretty colors pretty traps on here. Another fly trap that I'm going to clip the stem on it is a dente or dente uh, uh, fly trap. And you can see on here that there are a lot of little babies on here. This thing does produce a lot of side growth, but I've got a couple of good stems, uh, fly traps on here. And let's see if I can get in here to show you the teeth. Teeth. Focus on the teeth. They don't have the same cilia as the some of the other plants do, but um, that's part of the, uh, the charm of these things is their uh, the trap itself. But I've got a good sick, a thick stock here, stem, and I'm going to plant this one as well as this one. Short discussion. When do I want to take and let the flower grow and have just flower and seeds and all that good stuff? And when do I want to trim it down and use it for propagation? For my feeling, if it is a typical plant, I don't care. You know, if it is something that is not a cultivar, if it flowers, if it seeds, great. If it is a cultivar, technically, whatever you get from seeds is not the same as the parent plant. Tripping. So... Technically, you can't call it the same as the parent. It's going to have a little bit different characteristics than the parent. So, in my case, this one has got good growth on it. It's got a good flower stem. I'm going to trim this one. If it was a flower stem coming out of the little one, I would simply trim that and let the plant grow all on its own without the flower stem. Flower stem does need energy in order to push this big thing up to uh, near uh, eight, to eight inches to a foot. So, so in this case, I am going to trim this thing because I've got a good stem. I don't want it to get too big because then it gets more uh, stiff, woody, and it's gonna have less chance of growth. In the case of my maroon monster, I don't know why it decided to take a bend on here. This has also got enough strength on it that I'm going to be able to use it. There's good growth on the trap itself, so it's a good healthy plant. But by trimming the flower stem and planting those, propagating that, I will have an exact copy of the plant. 
So what I have is going to be the same name as the mother plant. So how do I do this? Let's get started. First thing I do is I go out to dinner. That works. When you go out to dinner, you take home leftovers. And leftovers come in this size, or the desserts come in this one. Desserts? You have leftover desserts? Yeah, I do. So with those pots, with those containers, I can put in my media and I've got a little dome and I have my humidity control. So let's get started with this thing. Some people use sphagnum moss as their media for doing the propagation by uh, the flower stem. I still like to use the peat mix. And this is my mix of sand, perlite, and peat moss. And it is a moist, almost wet mix. And the reason for that is the when I cut up the plant uh, flowering stem, it wants to have contact with the, the media and it wants some moisture. So this is my way of doing it. It is not 100%, but what is? But this is what I do. Let's look into it. So my pot is filled with the media that I like to use. And next thing is to grab my scissors. And which plant am I going to start with? Let's go with a Dante. The uh, Dante being it's green is uh, probably going to show up just a little bit better. Let me move this out of the way, put this in here. So I'm going to take and clip way down to the base. There. And I want to get the stem only. I don't want to disturb any of the plant. So now I have the flower stem that I want. And I try to get these things when they're six inches or less. Because as they get longer, they get woodier, they get tougher to do. But I can't, I can go shorter, but I don't seem to get as much value out of that, you might say. Now I've got this, I'm going to cut this into pieces at about one inch. Now I'm left with a flower stem. The flower stem I treat a little differently. I'm going to stick this about like that. I'm going to, the, the cut end is in the peat and the flower section is laying on the peat. So what I ended up with is the flower side stuck into the peat and then laying down, resting, I think is where I was trying to go, resting on the peat. The other two pieces are stuck in horizontally. Some people will go vertically, some people will go at a 45. One end is in the peat, the other end is exposed, and it will grow from the peat side. So again, what I do is stick them both in and give it a little bit of light covering and that way it maintains that. Then it's to simply cover it and it goes into the house under bright light. It's too hot in the greenhouse so inside it goes. So what happens? Well it sits there for months and I do mean months. This one was a Marie, uh, excuse me, a mirror, Venus flytrap mirror, that I 
for some reason it decided to put out a flower stem in February. So I cut it and stuck it into this pot. And what I've got is a lot of weeds. That's why I don't like using peat moss straight out of the package. I boil it first to try to reduce that. Doesn't always work. Why am I showing you weeds? Well, because in here is a tiny, tiny little fly trap. That is a fly trap that was started from the flower section of the stem. The other sections just died. Um, no, no need to even look for them. But it's not going to make it 100% successful, but you will get, likely will get some flowers or uh, stems turning into little plants. But, like I said, little plants. Let me zoom into this thing. Focus. There we go. Okay, I lost it. There we go. You see how tiny that thing is. So, from February, March, April, May, that's a long time. But that's what it's going to take is two to three months typically in order to produce a trap. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my maroon monster and see if I can get some of these things to propagate. And if I get uh, three, four stems uh, sections on this one, that's potential for four little fly traps, five little traps maybe. Uh, so it will make an identical to the parent so I can you know, call this thing a maroon monster. Same on my dente. Um, as long as you've got a pulling or something from the fly trap and you're not doing it by seeds, you've got the identical as the parent. So that's how it works for me. I hope that it has helped you. Uh, expect it to take some time, keep it under bright lights, but out of the greenhouse because my camera even shut down, it's so hot in here. If you thought the information on this video was helpful, like the video. If you'd like to see when another one comes out, which probably will be soon, subscribe. And if you have questions about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how, what happens if I do this, like what would happen if I would use rooting hormone on them? I don't know that answer, but I have enough fly traps and stuff that I can experiment and I can always try it. I think I will. I think I'll give that a try. All right. So anyway, like it, subscribe, ask questions, and I'll see you next time.